Alright, what is going on guys? Today's Adam AK Marf and today's show is gonna be packed. So stick around. We're gonna talk about all of the events that have just happened in the last twenty-four hours. And of course, uh, China changing its uh, nuclear arsenal. We're gonna talk about that and much, much more. So we'll be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. Uh, can't say thank you enough. What is happening? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marf Google News. Welcome. Anyone new here, just remember, every article, tweet, video, picture that we show you here today is going to be backed up on our website. And in fact, you can also get notifications there as well. Go to marfuglenews.com and sign up for the alerts as well. You can get emails from us. Uh, we uh, send them out very sparingly. I believe the last one was about two months ago. We send them out when we really, truly believe that uh, either SHTF is going to happen or we send you out something of importance so make sure to sign up for that over there and then if you go it's very easy to navigate our website it is all done by thumbnail i actually have to refresh myself because uh, apparently i am just a dummy uh and you'll see the deceptive events uh, right here it could all start here just look for this thumbnail and once you click on that you will be brought to a page uh, that will bring you to every single article, tweet, video, picture, everything. All the links and sources are there. That way, you know exactly where your news is coming from. Uh, that way, you can't, uh, again, say that we're just making it up. Uh, if we do say something that is opinion, we will make sure to clarify so. And then over on the right side is NordVPN, uh, EMP Shield, Patriot Supply, all of our affiliates, and uh, PayPal if you want to do a live message on the show. And then, of course, Amazon link and all that. It, those are ways to support independent media and YouTubers like me. Uh, again, that is a good way to do it. On the bottom, there is web-only content. Basically, the stuff that is too hot for TV, that is going to be down at the bottom. That's like the stuff that people are just getting knocked off for. Uh, that is on our website only. And that's like a whole other show. And then I do want to uh, give you a warning. The Basically, the for the time of this show is how many hours is left on the EMP contest. There's no purchase necessary. There is two hours left, as you can see in the upper right-hand corner of that. Uh, literally, this show uh, is going to be the last of it. This is a, an exclusive contest just for our channel. This is a huge company that's you know doing these huge contracts with companies like DHS, DOD, uh, of course, Texas, the Demso team for their grid. Uh, and they're doing this specifically for us. So make sure to participate. This isn't some countrywide or, or nationwide thing. This is for us here at Marfugal News for the Marfugal family. So remember that. That's uh, That was something we asked for and they ended up doing. This is, believe it or not, uh, they say this is going to be uh, possibly the last contest just because uh, they've already given out $10,000 worth of stuff to just the Fugle family alone. They've done nine of these contests. I believe this is the 10th. So again, it, I mean, it's only, you can only do that for so long. <laughs> so um, let's see here. Uh, let's bring in Dex, my co-host slash internet brother. Uh, he is going to be joining me with the news tonight. Every other night we do calls. Uh, so that number will not apply. Tonight, I'm gonna have him uh, commenting on the news with me. So what's going on, Dex, and how are you doing? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I'm doing just fine. 
So lots to talk about tonight. Um, obviously, we have uh, Zillow laying w- off one quarter of its staff. It says the real estate website Zillow will lay off nearly one quarter of its staff as it prepares to stop buying and selling homes, according to the New York Times. It says the company made the announcement on Tuesday, citing heavy losses, uh, the Times reported. Zillow offers a division of the company that allowed instant offers to be made on homes reportedly took a loss over $420 million during the three months ending in September in the 12 months prior. Uh, The company brought in approximately the same amount. It said Zillow's chief executive Richard Barton acknowledged that the division was proving unsuccessful. And it said that we've determined that the unpredictability in forecasting homes prices uh, far exceeds what we anticipated. Well, no Sherlock. (laughs) It says we also said uh, that the the decision to move forward with layoffs is weighed uh, heavily on him. Uh, It says we could blame the current losses on exogenous market events, Barton said, but it would be naive to predict that unpredictable events won't happen in the future. Shares of Zillow have reportedly fallen by 50% since a high in February, and the stock plummeted to uh, 11.5%. So that that is pretty crazy to to see that uh, that whole thing there. Um, I don't want your stupid thing here. Get out of here. Okay, cool. Either way, uh, that's pretty big. Now, Dex, as far as Zillow goes, Zillow offered – isn't that all they do? I thought that – I guess – Well, so everybody would use Zillow to go look at your your house value, right? It, that was the main thing. And then you could find houses for sale. And they were just basically aggregating all of the MLS listings everywhere. But recently, and obviously as we're hearing about the end of, but recently they started buying. So, like, you would look up your house and or look up a house you're trying to buy, but you would realize they would offer you a price for your house. And it was kind of crazy because I heard some neighbors of mine actually sold their house to Zillow. And I was like, you got to be kidding me because I'm sure you could have gotten more money than selling it to a large, you know, uh, investment company like them. So, uh, but apparently, you know, they weren't either weren't doing things right, or this is an excuse for a layoff of a lot of people for maybe some other reasons we're not aware of, but apparently they're trying to say, Hey, we can't find enough people to fix up and flip homes. So we're not making money on them. So we're losing, but uh, I, you know, well, just to go a back, couple ways to look at this, right? Just to go back, this it, it's just very coincidental that uh, now the data might show maybe they have uh, they might have exact proof. A lot of these companies don't put everything out publicly. Uh, they could put out uh, partials. I, I don't know. Maybe because of uh, IRS and it's a big company, maybe the, this is all publicly known. Uh, their their whole thing. I don't know how. You know, I, I guess you would think a company like this would think of this kind of stuff beforehand. Uh, buying houses, even if they hold on to them for a few months, wouldn't they go up and gain the money back? I don't know. Well, they 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 used an algorithm, and so they had an algorithm in their system that allowed them to figure out what a, pri- a house was worth. And if they they were they thought that they could use this algorithm that they had developed over the, so many years to actually buy houses at one price and sell them for another and make a profit. And it just turned out that, and this is what they're saying, it just turned out that that didn't work. But how? what well, we don't know is if that's just the story that's coming out and maybe they're just going to get out of the home buying market because it's at its peak or it re- recently just peaked and there's no reason to buy at the highs anymore. And, you know, this is just a cover for something else, right? I don't know. Okay. And not to speculate, and this is speculation again, uh, there are a few, I'll just give you an example of a few other companies Uh Actually, I, I'll just say this. A few other companies are saying that they are laying off for one reason when really, in reality, they are laying, they're not laying off. Uh, they have to lay off because uh, it just so happens that this is times out with the deadline for this new rule that is applying to every company with uh, employees over 100 employees. So I, I just think it's funny. A quarter of them are, are now being laid off, and they say it's because of uh, profit loss and it weighs heavy and... Uh, especially the same day today, I, we did not put it, I, Dex, I don't know if you ended up seeing the video I put on Twitter. Um, I forgot to tell you about this. Uh, Los Angeles sheriff came out and essentially warned, and he is an elected sheriff, I believe. Otherwise, I don't think he would be doing what he does, uh, what he did today. 
he did a press conference on uh, essentially uh, warning people that it's going to be a mass exodus of the Los Angeles uh, Sheriff Department and they're losing all their homicide detectives. Uh, they're losing all of their people, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds. And he showed the data behind it. He said, already we know for a fact uh, that this deadline is going to basically wipe out uh, most of our force. And I mean, it's like so bad. And he uh, compared a lot of stuff. I think that that video should go viral just because I, I could not believe he went through and showed different stadiums, different cities. Los Angeles uh, County is one of the only counties in that whole area that San Bernardino, all these other places are not doing that same date. That man, right? That man uh, go on a date, right? Uh, to them, they are. Uh, to make that happen, all these other departments are not. Maybe they're going to do it last. And then he said that the supervisors basically told him, to, uh, pull, pulled down, and, and he hasn't talked to his supervisor. They're making all these stupid decisions. He showed pictures of full stadiums with no one wearing anything. And then he goes, but you want, you know, he was basically making a risk uh, and priority kind of analysis. The uh, reporters on that tried to tear him a new one and he had an answer for absolutely everything and a common sense answer even broke it down to simpler turn terms to where he was doing uh i i guess um uh i i guess he made comparisons and made made analogies that made perfect sense and just blew the reporters out of the water so i i, I hope that we can connect that you did not see that though right dex uh, no, I didn't see it, but I'm going to go grab it. And okay, it, it was website. it was today. It's probably seven or eight tweets back. If you have not followed me over at Mar uh, at Marfugel, make sure to go do so. I just joined uh, Getter. I was dece I was deceived by one of their ads. Um, again, I think that Getter is a good thing, but um, one of their ads made it heavily look like that was uh, T Man's uh, new social uh, platform. It is not. It is somebody from his campaign, which I guess that's how it, they worded some weird thing. Uh, at the same time that you have T-Man making his new one, which I guess uh, the truth social or whatever it is, is not going to be out until 2022 or not going to start for a while. So I just thought that was uh, pretty deceptive. I did tweet that, so I did want to correct that. If I make a mistake, I will. Uh, I always correct it. And uh, again, so, but I think it. Uh, from what I see, it looks better than some of the other ones that I've seen. Uh, but again, we'll, we'll see how that ends up working out. I saw some pretty big names join it. Uh, Liz Topple, Cody Abbott, and Mar Marie Brown. Thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, Stacey Lanner, Abracadabra, and Mike Concho. Thank you for being the last supporters out. And then on DLive, a bunch of people that popped in last uh, last show. Thank you. Lisa K. Uh, Release a quack and nice to see you. Divine1122. Jammer, our mod, was actually the top uh, supporter last night. So that was really sweet of you, uh, Jammer. You didn't have to do that. And Jammer just gifted a, a subscription to Ad Adelheid. So thank you. Thank you for spreading the love. That's that's really amazing. All right, and then uh, as far as them laying it off, what do you think? Put it in the comments down below. Make sure to keep your comments clean. SpaceX toilet leak will force NASA astronauts to wear space nappies. It says that the splashdown could lead to splash back as four astronauts will be forced to wear mess-friendly undergarments on their return journey from the International Space Station. Uh, this is what NASA has revealed. Uh, you know, on top of all the stuff they don't reveal. An ongoing problem with the toilet on board SpaceX's uh, Crew Dragon capsules means that astronauts returning to Earth this month won't be able to use the bathroom until they land. As a result, they'll be forced to wear something resembling nappies, according to NASA's commercial crew program manager Steve Stitch. Uh, th these are uh, most likely NASA-designed uh, man diapers, and uh, apparently... Uh, there's a lot of really big names looking into getting these. I, I even heard our uh, current administration is looking into these. Uh, I don't know why, though. I, I have no idea uh, why they would be looking into NASA-designed uh, nappies. During its last outing, in which four civilians spent three days in orbit, a SpaceX crew Dragon reportedly sprang a major leak in zero gravity. Hmm. Kind of looks like one of those things that they wrap, uh, the tourniquets that they wrap around... Only, uh, yeah, that's pretty gross. And that was, I, I suspect that's uh stock footage, not, not the actual NASA one. It'll probably <laughs> have their logo on it. I was going to say like, okay. So, uh, and I also saw some other thing. I, I keep seeing these comments uh, on videos, like 
they show the wrong pictures or they show stock photos trying to reference it and people have to correct it when they watch a video when they see the stock footage stock footage is used in almost all these videos uh but sometimes sometimes it's really bad like you know showing the um, uh, american flag when talking about the confederate right uh when you're talking about that and they show the wrong one obviously i could see people commenting but people comment about the weirdest stuff on on videos that i see on youtube uh when people are clearly using kind of reference footage in fact we've we've done the same thing um as far as yeah that doesn't look nasa designed i'm gonna get that off screen it says an alarm went off when urine apparently got sucked into a fan system and sprayed out of the toilet in all directions Luckily, the leak was contained to a storage area under the floor, which meant the crew were able to get, avoid getting drenched. Ugh. I would be pissed off. Supreme Court to hear biggest gun rights case in more than a decade. The Supreme Court uh, takes up the most important gun rights case in more than a decade Wednesday. One of the both uh, one of both sides hope uh, will clarify how much protection the Second Amendment provides for carrying a outside the home. It's an issue the court repeatedly ducked after issuing a landmark 5-4 ruling in 2008 that said that the Second Amendment guarantees an individual right to keep a hand at home for self-defense. A decision in the current case, which comes from New York, could affect the ability of state and local governments to impose a wide range of of firearms regulations. It says New York prohibits carrying a openly, but allows residents to get a license to carry a concealed firearm if they can demonstrate a requirement that goes beyond a general desire for self-protection. Gun owners in the state sued, and it said saying that that makes it virtually impossible for ordinary citizens to obtain the license. Among the law's challengers are the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association and the affiliate, uh, affiliate of the NRA and the two uh, men who applied for general permits to carry uh, a for protection uh, but were turned down. A federal judge in the U.S. Court of Appeals for a Second Circuit rejected their challenge. So Australia actually already kind of went away with uh, all the and look at how that turned out. Really great, right? So if you do have uh, kind of, um, I guess, what do they call that? It's a T word. Dex, do you know what that T word is? It's like T-Y uh, it's it ends with Annie. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Do you? It's on the tip of my tongue. It's T T Y T T Annie. Annie, get your no T Annie. I don't know. It it basically uh, it stops governments from you know getting too powerful. And if they did end up turning, or if we had some sort of crazy. Uh, situation where uh, there was a, uh, some sort of coup or something and our whole thing was taken over and, and people were invading houses and things. People could defend themselves. Uh, they can't do that in every country, believe it or not. Uh, the thing is, is people think it's uh, for each other. It's actually for uh, protecting ourselves against a much more powerful force. The Globalist Channel says, be careful tomorrow. Pray nothing happens. Uh, I hope so as well. Andy Burnham, take care of number one and don't step in number two. Hey, that's that's pretty common sense. And then Conscious Creator says they three on three are getting rid of everyone important so they can move the un soldiers in and get things popping. Uh, and that's un soldiers, the UN. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty crazy stuff that is going on here. And and this is this kind of stuff that people should be paying attention to. Even if you don't own one, I think most people should support the right. It's kind of it's kind of uh, kind of that way. Andy Burnham. Well, it's not one of ding, those ding, ding. Uh, things that we can do anything about. Like at the moment, we can't you know write our congressperson or anybody. It's really up to the judicial system. But it's certainly one of those things that we should all pay attention to because it has significant consequences. You know, if it goes one way, um, and and protecting uh, the Constitution the way most people think it should should. And then that's a good sign. And if it goes the other way, I think what we'll see is a lot of other cities and a lot of other locations start imposing the same uh, rules that you see in New York and other cities like D.C. Oh, you'll, you'll see uh, uh, almost immediately New York, uh, Seattle, where I am. And then, of course, uh, Los Angeles would be one of the first cities as well. I mean, you're talking. The, and the thing is, is it it will only be in half the country for so many years that people will end up doing it illegally. And, and, and I mean, it, it's just kind of like, um, 
I guess the same. I don't know. I I'll let you guys argue about it in the comments down below. Uh, it, it, they, once these amendments start getting chopped up and taken apart and redone, we're not in the same country. Period. Uh, the UK and all these other places that have already done away with it, it's it's not really that great when the really bad stuff happens. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Andy Burnham, ding, 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 you got it. Tyrannical, yes. The Tyrannical Rex. That's what we, uh, that's what we're looking at. Game Changer, blood tests that can detect 50 different types of cancers set to roll out in the U.S., this is, I, I would hate to take this thing. I'm already nervous enough. Dex, w would you, um, I mean, obviously I, this kind of thing is, is good. I would be nervous to take exactly it. exactly what I thought. Like when, when I was reading this, I was like, yeah, this is really great. Like all of a sudden you can, they can, you know, det detect 50 different things from a simple blood test, which is pretty easy to do. Right. It's not as evasive as other things, but on the flip side, it's like, yeah, I don't know that I want to know. But actually, you do want to know. Ultimately, it's just one of those scary things because if what you if, what know if you, sooner, like you can treat it sooner, right? I mean, just what if you found out you have some weird one, and it's like you start chemo that day or whatever. I don't know. It's or I guess a lot of people. I, I, I won't go into the chemo argument or whatever, but that would be freaky. Um, I watched my friend die of cancer in six months from diagnosis to death, and I took him that whole time to all of his chemo stuff. I saw him just wither away. They, he was in so much pain. If you've ever uh, known somebody with cancer, uh, this is, he got a bottle. I would say, it was like, it was like the size of a one liter. It, it was liquid Vicodin. He was drinking Vicodin like it was uh, Diet Coke. It was actual liquid, vi I've never seen that before. Uh, anyone who knows anybody with um, with cancer, they they probably have seen that. And he was drinking that. He could take so much; it was insane. He was in so much pain. Uh, he had a esophageal, and then uh, that esophageal, they did a thing and they saw these stones. They actually thought that they were uh, they were um, kidney stones or whatever. So when they they ended up cracking up his whole chest to take a part of his esophagus out. And they thought, oh, after this, it's going to be good. Well, when they got open, they opened up his whole chest, saw that it was actually the the chunks that they saw were not, uh, they were dead cancer cells in his liver. They were dead because of the chemo. But since it was in the liver, once they see cancer in your liver, they know that it's metastasized to your whole body. Well, if they see cancer in your liver, you're done. Basically, that's that means it's gone all these other places. And then since they cracked his whole chest open and had him open, he had to first then heal from that for them to do chemo again. So in that time period, it went from his liver to his brain. I mean, it was just so fast. And then my friend Luke, who used to be a security guard at one of these 24-hour uh, clubs over the weekends or in my early 20s I would go to, uh, he was just like the biggest, buffest, just fittest guy in four months. He went from something to nothing. So, I mean, I think something like this is good. Uh, at the same time, it's like, you know, why has this not been around earlier? I, I wonder, with all the money that they get for cancer research, uh, some even accuse them of, of keeping it around because it does make so much money. I wonder how much this thing will be. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good question. You know, this they're going on like a three-year test now where they're going to, um, you know, use a whole bunch of people um, you know, doing samples uh, over a period of time of three years to see how the detections work. I mean, they've already done tests on it uh, with smaller groups. Um, but the thing is, they're looking for DNA, what's called cell-free DNA, and that actually leaks from the tumors. So they can yeah. detect if this DNA change, this DNA change that happens, uh, it's not changing the DNA, but it's like a change in the structure around the DNA that happens from a tumor when a, a cancer changes cells and that's sort of present in the blood uh and they have a pretty good success rate so far it's over 50 percent. it's like 51 percent. but if like you said if you can find somebody and give them a warning when they're at like say stage one that's a lot better than finding out when you're at stage three or stage four right it's just a cancer is so scary uh my other my friend with the esophageal he actually survived testicular cancer had one of his removed uh, and then 12 years later, ended up getting that. So it's like, 
he already survived a uh, a really bad one and then boom once again uh, tell me your cancer story down below. I'd love to read. I, I honestly, I, I know that a lot of other people have been affected like me. I It was the one of the roughest things in my life. In fact, I have his, one of these days I'll show you the, the tattoo I got of uh, him on, I, I didn't get his face. I got a microphone because he, uh, he was a radio voice type guy and I uh, got his initials in there. But yeah, uh, I, I'd love to hear your guys' story. I, I think it's it's important to, to get that and air that out. A lot of us have a lot of pain from cancer. And I believe, just personally, my opinion is uh, they may be keeping this stuff around so they can make billions off of this stuff. Some of the pills are like $1,000, $100,000 a pill, stuff like stuff like that. Why does that exist? Uh, okay. And then uh, before we move on, uh, I'm actually going to have Dex cover something. But uh, again... If you want to support us, we are independent. We don't have a multi-channel network. We don't even have a multi-billion dollar company behind us. We have our audience in the Fugle Fam. If you guys do want to stock up, uh, the good thing about this is you can stock up and help us at the same time and even get a discount. Right now, they're doing $100 off on a three-month supply of food. This is long-term survival food. Uh, it's also good. I tried four different brands and ended up with uh, My Patriot Supply before uh, making my decision because a lot of these are end up gross or you don't want to eat them after 10 years. You know, if, if the food's not edible after 10 years, then why even get it? This stuff is really good. Um, I actually really, really enjoyed it. And I actually ate a sample that was seven years old. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, and then... Uh, make sure to go check it out. They have everything from battery banks to water purification. If you do not, or water filtration, I should say, if you don't have water filtration, that is something that is going to be an absolute importance of everything. Uh, if everything or anything happens, if our lights go out, that's why they say 90% of us would die is because of a lack of potable drinkable water. So that is a huge thing. Uh, and then, of course, they have everything from battery banks to iodine pills, pretty much anything you need to survive through uh, whatever situation. Go to marfuglenews.com slash prep. Again, that helps us out and uh, gives us a small commission and gives you a discount. So I think it's a win-win for everybody. All right. And then, uh, Dex, do you want to talk about our next story? Facebook is to delete one billion people's faces. Wow. Okay. So yeah, that's exactly what they say they're doing. Um, so this announcement uh, has recently come out and they are saying that they're going to get rid of their facial recognition data. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of, you know, on one hand, I'm thinking, okay, well, is it because they pretty much have everybody's faces and it's, you know, it's already been the damage has already been done and the algorithms have already been created and the information's already been, you know, siphoned off to the proper places so they can use it for what they need. And this is just a feel good thing. Um, there's a lot of other things probably going on here around, you know, uh, legal issues and lawsuits. I know Texas is currently in the middle of a lawsuit with uh, Facebook over some of their privacy and data issues. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. It's kind of a big statement from them. Um, but uh Proof sort of in the pudding, and I guess we'll never know what's in their pudding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, hopefully not. As far as the facial recognition templates, do you? I, I I bet most of you probably remember this when they started tagging pictures, and I still had a Facebook at the time. And what happened is I posted a picture with six of us, and I did not type it in. You used to have to click on their face because it would recognize, hey, this is a face. And it would recognize, uh, you know, people, at, I think at first it was maybe friends, but you had to click and then type in their name. Then it got to the point where you would post a picture of six people and some of these people were not on Facebook. It would tag them for you. So it automatically, if you hovered over their face, all of a sudden it said, you know, this is uh, John Smith and this is Jane Doe. And everybody was like, I, I'm so surprised that, you know, I, I was freaked out about that. A lot of people weren't. They were like, oh, that's cool. That's not cool. That means that they are recognize, recognizing you. And then this is all tied in. Now we know Facebook is tied in directly with the government. The government admitted that when they started doing this whole, uh, you know, truth campaign or whatever they, that they called it. Uh, in fact, they're even having sp Facebook snitch on people that are too prepared. They say, or is your neighbor too prepared? Does he have 
Uh, is he too responsible? We want to know. If that person is too responsible and has some sort of insurance for a disaster, let us know. we got to take care of that. And in the event of our planned disaster, we want to take all that back. It's scary. These facial recognition templates, uh, this is like, you know, this isn't, technology is moving forward at a scary pace. Well, and, and Adam, what's so interesting about this, and, and it's a predicament that Facebook has had from day one, but the facial recognition capabilities are not really that complex. It's complex when you say, I want to pick out a single person in a whole crowd of faces and not know who they are, right? But if I don't know if you can remember back, you know, I know you take a lot of photos, but back in the day of storing photos on your computer and using a photo app to manage that on your computer, it actually had the ability to start identifying faces that were similar. And you could say, okay, this is Sally and this is Bill. And it would say, here's the rest of the pictures, but that's happening on your computer. It's not in a cloud somewhere. It's not in Facebook. And that's why I say Facebook sort of had this problem because they're not on your computer and they're not on your phone. They're in a cloud by the nature of the way they're built. So everything that they were doing was building this algorithm around this facial recognition uh, for the same type of feature that you could get on your phone or you could get on your computer in a safer way, right? Having an application do it on your end just means it's just the people in your computer and you pretty much have control over to use it or not use it, and the data is not really going anywhere. No, it's not. And uh, as far as somebody just said, will they actually delete it? No. I Yeah, I agree with you there. Roaming Wolf just said something as well, said, um, you know, what would Facebook even do? They, it's not like they can do anything anyways. What they'll do is they'll give that information to the government, and then the government puts you on a list of the, the people they say are bad, bad. Uh, well, that, and haven't they announced they've been hacked before? Haven't they had data yes. leaks? Haven't they had other leaks? Yes. So it's like, okay, well, they can just sort of write it off and say, yeah, we've deleted it, but you know, they've in theory given it to someone else and can say, yeah, it was it was taken during a hack. Now, uh, I want to I, I we're going to move on from this because we have really important stuff coming out. Uh, but I did want to read this part because this is exactly what I was saying with the tagging. It says the announcement comes several months after a federal judge approved a settlement of a class action lawsuit in Illinois in which Facebook agreed to pay $650 million for allegedly using face tagging and other biometric data without the permission of users. I mean, like, that is exactly what I was talking about. This is the, this is like where you post a personal picture and it ends up, they, they tag your friend who is not, they, they don't even have Facebook. They've never had Facebook. They've never owned it. They've never signed up for an account. And this is what that congressman, uh, what was it, uh, Hawley or um, uh, Josh Hawley? Is that what it is? I, I might be getting yeah, that name Yeah, that's right. the correct name. I'd, Josh Hawley yeah. came out and showed the, the system of how they were following you off of Facebook. And we're talking about everywhere. Uh, when you were in Chrome or when you were in some third-party thing, somehow they had a way, so they were tracking what you were doing in those other apps. Not only that, they were getting information and collecting information on those uh, people outside in your friend circle that are not associated with meta over here. It's metadata. Uh, Jillian Gems, thank you. Massive support. Thank you, uh, guys. Get a J in the chat for Jillian's Gems. Thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you for supporting independent media. And then uh, the same goes for Kim. Kim Kalisek, uh, thank you for a massive support of the show. I uh, did a $50 super chat. That's impressive. Thank you so much. We appreciate your support. Uh, again, uh, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Tico and Taco, uh, I appreciate your support as well. Everybody that has supported independent media, thank you guys for the super stickers, everything else. Um, again, cannot uh, cannot say thank you enough. And then uh, just a quick shout out while we're on the subject. Uh, Gone Girl 777, thank you so much for your support over on uh, PayPal. We appreciate you uh, more than anything right now. And then Erica M., uh, thank you as well. Thank you for the high quality broadcast is what was said. Uh, thank you for those two uh, very special people. Thank you guys for supporting us through that. And then we have cargo theft spikes as a backlog of container ships grow. Now, it says the cargo thefts along the West Coast have spiked this year as the backlog of container ships as at the nation's largest ports continue to grow heading into, of course, the holiday season. 
It says that the more that the supply chain in general is backed up, the more cargo you're going to have sitting, and that creates a bigger opportunity for thefts. Said uh, Scott Cornell, a crime and theft specialist at the insurance company Travelers. It says thieves made off with more than $5 million worth of goods as a result of a so-called supply chain theft in California during the third quarter of 2021. A surge of about 42% from a year ago. According to the Cargo Theft uh, Recovery and Prevention Network CargoNet, it says uh, that in other parts of the country, CargoNet has seen a year-over-year drop in supply chain theft. But it said that it expects to see crimes continue to surge in California and other hard-hit states like Texas and Florida. Entering the final quarter of 2021, CargoNet expects that theft activity will remain elevated, CargoNet said in its most recent uh, quarterly update. Dex, I also want to add, as far as theft in general, uh, think about how theft in L.A. is going to be. Uh, We just got the warning from that sheriff essentially saying that Uh, He has the data to prove that after this deadline, he's losing almost all of his force. And he's losing respected people. He said he's like basically people that I really wanted to stick around. They're they're doing an early retirement because they don't want to be around. They don't want to do this. Uh, Some of the most skilled and talented investigators, the people at the very top of the food chain, uh, are all leaving. They're just bouncing out. So they're going to have untalented newbies, uh, people that are just have no experience, untrained, which is how we got to some of the situations that made people riot. That's all going to be the most, and they're going to be understaffed. So as far as theft, I cannot believe like what's going to happen in the West Coast on top of all of this. Dex, what do you think as far as the as far as this goes? Well, I heard China called the sheriff and said they were looking for uh, some missiles in a cargo container ship that apparently <laughs> went missing. Yeah, uh, and they forgot that there was uh, there was about forty uh, soldiers in there too. Uh, they didn't mean for that one to be airtight. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, as far as you know, what is yeah, but what's in but, that? But but being more serious, um, yeah, we're we're seeing crime go up all over. Every major city, everybody, everywhere has had a crime increase, um, even in small cities, uh, you know, small counties, rural areas, everybody. And so, um, you know, you're this type of thing. I, it's not that it's to be expected, but it's not necessarily shocking news. But at the same time, it's, it's like, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate because we're depending on all these car these cargo containers to get out and help you know decrease this backlog and now we're dealing with them being stolen um you know and and the the parts in them or the the products in them being stolen which just adds to the the trouble right exactly and it's only gonna it it compounds the uh problem uh by the way i wanted to shout out uh thank you aloha prepper for subscribing i feel like you've already been around uh but that's awesome i'm uh yeah aloha's called in before huh it just says that they just subscribed. Well, maybe it just it took that long. What, two years to get you to, to to press that button? Speaking of which, if you have not pressed that button yet, if you watch the show every single time and you're still not subscribed because of some principle, like, I don't subscribe, I don't know. Make sure to do that. It really does help us. Uh, we are uh, on this channel uh, more so. I do want to remember uh, to remind you, we are almost to 200,000 subscribers on Marfugal News. If you have not been over to our other channel, it is at uh, 197,500, but basically about 2,500 away from a huge uh, milestone. 200,000, which is pretty giant. And then we have the Air Force says that nearly 8,500 missed the deadline for the shots. Okay, this is a big deal because these are some of the most talented people as well. That's 8,500 that very well could be removed. That's a huge chunk of talented, skilled, trained. I can't imagine how much money has gone into the 85,000, uh, I'm sorry, 8,500, uh, how many millions of dollars has gone into training those 8,500? Can well, you? Well, let me ask you this, Adam. If just, just hypothetically speaking, if you had to put out news and you know you had to put out a number because it can't be zero, like they couldn't come out and say zero people have not done it. They have to come up with some number. Do you think that number is going to be underreported or overreported? 
I think it's going to be severely underreported. Exactly. So keep that in mind when you're reading this article. What I, whoa, whoa, whoa. I sort of think of when I hear this. The, so the the sheriff who was being truthful and is getting crap for it, he put out the Fugent and the data, and it says it's way worse than this. This would this would be based on data that they don't have to release, right? They they are the military. They can keep. Yeah, they don't have to tell us. Yeah, exactly. And they're not going to say zero because that's just. BS. There's thousands of people that know that their family members are not doing it or they're about to get booted. Uh, and I think the Air Force changed their thing. So it's it's an honorable discharge or, or something. It's it's not dishonorable. It's not dishonorable. It's just, um, yeah, it's not dishonorable. It's to step up from that, but not an honorable. At one point, it was, it was literally uh, going to be a dishonorable discharge where, I mean, you actually lose your rights uh, to even own a bang bang. Uh, if you get a dishonorable discharge, something like that. So they're getting an honorable discharge. They can change careers. Uh, that I think that's kind of how it should be, right? If if you're, they say, hey, you're gonna you gotta choose this, choose that. I mean, it shouldn't be like that at all. But at least you know it's it's not these people that were uh, in that press conference. You got to see it because they say, oh, well, are you telling them that, them? Uh, the reporter says, well. By you saying this, are you telling people to not follow the law? And the the sheriff goes, it's not a law. I, I just, I, I thought that would have owned them. People are so dumb. They just don't, they don't realize. I, I just, it, people, honestly, the top tier people think that it's a law. It's not a law. It's uh, just not. Uh, by the way, big shout out to Ilea. Ilea, if you're not following, she has a new uh, Instagram that is doing her voiceover work, but she's really funny. She is one of our mods. She is actually on uh, a, a certain leaning side that I'm leaning on the opposite side, but she gets along with almost everybody because that's how it should be. If, it doesn't matter what your political beliefs, but she has been uh, doing some funny videos on her Instagram, uh, but on top of that, she did a really funny uh, B administration video. She believes in uh, um, some different things than I do, but it's like everybody from all sides are now seeing kind of the absurdity of all of this stuff that's going on right now. And I think that it's really pushing people the opposite way. I mean, it's just absurd. The absurdity of this whole thing, this, uh, this entire uh, planet is one big circus right now. So it's pretty funny when you see uh, people making fun of it. That's what we should be doing. As far as uh, the 8,500, what do you think is going on there? And then the FBI releases declassified documents on September 11. Uh -huh. It says a firefighter places his hand on the name engravings on the South Pool during ceremonies to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the September 11th. Uh -uh. Uh -huh. And the September 1-1, uh, 2021 at the National September 1-1 Memorial and Museum in New York, the FBI released hundreds of pages of newly declassified documents Wednesday, November 3rd about its, uh, of course, its long effort to explore connections between the Shari government and the September 1-1 attacks, revealing the scope of strenuous but ultimately fruitless investigation whose outcome many question to this day. There might be some, I know that our percentage of younger people, like under 30, are very, very low here. But if there are some younger people here, I, I'm, I just implore you, uh, you are probably either not born or you do not remember, you are not old enough to remember this. This will change your life if you dig deep on that subject. If you dig deep and you really try. It is the reason I'm sitting here right now. It is the reason why I question everything. It is something that has been burned into my brain and almost everybody here most likely has been too. I mean, if you were alive, it definitely was burned into your brain. It is our generation's Pearl Harbor. It is our generation's, uh, you know, declaring World War II. It's, it's our generation of everything, right? It, we'll never forget. The documents that were released, now, Dex, of course, they're going to be redacted. They're this and that, and... Uh, is there anything that yeah, they so, found from it? So they were doing this because a lot of uh, the families that are trying to sue and have lawsuits against uh, Saud, the uh, Ray, yeah, uh, was um, they wanted more information and they were trying to do it. So there was basically um, the, their investigation, there being the FBI's investigation, 
into them was to try to figure out whether the um, there was connections to three specific nationals there uh, in the embassy and um, if there were any connections there. And ultimately in this document, if hundreds of pages, but the ultimate conclusion was they couldn't find, uh, they found insufficient evidence to charge any of those three people uh, with illegally supporting the event. So it, it doesn't necessarily help anybody. It, I guess, on one hand says, hey, the government's being more transparent and putting something out. But what they're putting out isn't like a smoking gun or anything. Yeah, it's 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 not what most of uh, those those twenty year remembrance uh, those family members really want. Um, just wanted to uh, pull up something real quick. I just want to remind people while we are on the subject, this is our other channel, Marfugal News. If you are subscribed here and not over there, make sure to do so. Uh, we're changing all sorts of things around here. We're trying to improve everything. We're trying to improve everything uh, as far as uh, how much content we're putting out on that channel. Uh, it, it This channel takes up so much work and so much time that it's, it's actually really hard to get out stuff on there. So we're doing shorts over there, but also I am doing something in my personal life to reorganize so I can do more over there. Um, so make sure to go follow that right now. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and make sure to hit that little bell and turn on all notifications. That's our sister channel. Make sure to check it out. Uh, again, I hope everybody ends up going over and doing the contest. Uh, we have about an hour left in that contest. EMP Shield, uh, again, is doing this massive contest. They've done it for 29 days or 30 days. And it is about to be up in about an hour. So you still have a chance to get over there and do so. If you do want to purchase one, though, this is one of the few ways you can actually protect yourself, just like the military and the government are doing. Uh, this is, of course, the EMP shield can protect against not only EMP, uh, all three phases of it, E1, E2, and E3, but it can also protect you against a Carrington-level event, uh, a solar flare, CME. Uh, it can protect your device. It basically grounds the signal uh, it grounds the uh, the signal before it can fry your device. Uh, this can actually ground in a picosecond, not even a microsecond, not a macrosecond, a picosecond. It is so fast uh, that this can handle uh, huge, huge amounts of power and, and ground it. So again, go over there. It can actually protect your house against lightning. It can protect your car against CMEs and, uh, of course, EMPs. Uh, they make a different device for almost everything. You can get one for your solar system, which people think, oh, I've got a solar system backup. That will be fried if you don't have it protected. Uh, if you have an, a ham radio, you can have that protected. Uh, anything that you don't uh, or is too big for a Faraday cage and you don't want to keep it in a Faraday cage in the first place, you should have it protected by this. This is not only Keystone Military tested, uh, but it is also uh, handmade, and they are the same company uh, that was contracted by the previous administration, uh, DHS, DOD, uh, to help them protect some of their major infrastructure. So if you want to protect yourself the same way, I highly recommend it. Uh, again, that also helps us out. You get a $50 off per device discount, and it ends up helping us out because they give us a commission. So thank you, everybody that has already done so. Either way, though, uh, this is how the ecosystem on YouTube works. You support YouTubers like myself or any of your favorites. If they do have affiliates, make sure if you do need something from, uh, if you see an affiliate and you're like, I need one of those, make sure to get it from your favorite YouTuber because we, especially in this area, uh, a lot of our stuff is uh, yellow advertising. It's the bottom of the barrel stuff or no, none at all, demonetized. So make sure to go check that out. Uh, thank you everybody for supporting us. That's why I, I really do dislike when these videos do, um, you know, how much do they do or how much do they make when they don't like a uh, high impact flicks completely demonetized. And then they did a video saying that he made this and this and this on uh, advertising. It's like he's completely demonetized. How are you going to do something like that? That actually affects that. And then, then people don't feel like going over and supporting that channel when they don't make anything. That's like messed up. I don't get that, especially when they're completely, completely wrong. Sue Latherum, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate that, and uh, thank you for the super stickers, guys. I, I can't say enough thank you. And then Texas, what in the heck is going on? Uh, Texas X 
67 says, you guys rock. Only news I trust. Hey, that's huge. Thank you for the Ninja Gini. Uh, Texas X says, love you guys and stay safe. Pray up with the armor of God. Lisa K and Cloud Pharrell, thank you guys for the diamonds. Release the Quacken. And, uh, of course, Queen BTP, Sandra R, and everybody else over there on uh, DLive. DLive, DLive. All right, uh, Dex, you want to talk about China to have 1,000 nuclear? I mean, we were just talking about this, and uh, now they are saying that they are in a bid to overtake us. <laughs> yeah, so look, it, you know, three days ago or two days ago, we said, hey, they're going to be reaching for more silos, and we get an article that says they're actually doing three fields of 300 silos. And we said, yeah, they really probably need about 1,000 or more because, you know, we've got 1,700 in production. They only have, you know, 300 in production. Um, we've built 5,500. They're probably going to be looking for thousands of these. And now here we have an article that says China is to have, you know, a thousand nuclear weapons in the next decade, a bid to overtake the U.S. arsenal. This is complete BS. Okay, so they did not. They said the same thing about their Navy. It said that they may overtake us in 15 years. There was an article before uh, the Ch China task force came out and they said they in the next 15 years could overtake our Navy in size. Within a year after that article came out, the China task force came out and said that they not only have the largest Navy, but they had the largest Navy by 70 or 80 ships. Now they are plus 100, might even be 200. They are making these so fast. Those three fields are what we know about. We found out many, many times, and I'm, I'm saying it is now not even a pattern. It is a fact that they hide these things under cover. They've been making silos undercover. They've been making boats. They made all of these Navy ships under gigantic. I mean, we're talking about the size of a warehouse, the size of a, uh, a showware center, the size of a stadium. These covers to hide from satellites their production of, of Navy ships. We still don't know how many Navy ships are being produced. They could do the same thing and ca carbon copy it uh, time, uh, over and over and over again. They, instead of saying that they're making three carriers... They could be making 50 carriers. We don't know. And we only know about it until after they come out with it. I don't believe that they're making uh, three fields of 300. I believe that those are the three fields we know about. They are so blatantly trying to surpass us in every category that it is, it, I mean, it's incredibly ob obvious. And then you've got a, a president that people are questioning, is he helping? Is, he, is there some sort of thing here? It's all a big circus. It's a big show. But guess what? That show could very well in, uh, entail a lot of us uh, finding an early demise because they don't care. They don't care about us. We're Even if you were a uh, multi-millionaire, they don't care about you. You're, you're chump change. These are the people that are truly, truly in charge of the planet. Royal Marine Commandos force U.S. troops into a humiliating surrender in training exercises. That's kind of, uh, this is sad. Dex yeah, I, I couldn't believe the headline when I read it, um, but apparently this is what just, just went down. It says the Royal Marines dominated U.S. forces just days into a training exercise after eliminating nearly their whole unit. American uh, combatants asked for a reset halfway through a five-day simulated war exercise at the U.S. Marine Corps uh, 29 Palms Base in the Mojave Desert in Southern California. Having taken significant casualties from British commandos using a new battle structure, it says the Marines' kill board, which assesses damage done to enemy assets, had a tick against nearly all American assets at one point, meaning it had been rendered inoperable or destroyed. British forces were trialing the new literal response group structure, which will be the new template for uh, the commandos who are about to become more flexible and mobile under reforms directed by the first Sea Lord Admiral Sir Tony Radikin. So basically, the uh, British soldiers, which congratulations to you guys, to, uh, anyone in the UK, uh, to your forces kicking our ass. Um, I This is very sad to see. U.S. has always taken charge in this kind of area. Um, you know, I, a lot of different countries have their kind of really top-end special, specialists, and these guys are the most badass. Now, not to say these guys are super badass. Uh, the guys that they are that just lost in this battle, maybe it's a one-off. 
Uh, either way, it kind of shows you where our military might be going. That we've had many officials come out and say that the, the new kind of squads and stuff are not like the old ones. I mean, look at their recruiting. Uh, look at their recruiting habits right now. Look at their recruiting videos. Have we gone soft? I guess that's a question that many are asking. What do you guys think? Uh, Dex, what do you think about this as far as... It, I mean, it's... Well, look, they're, they're, they were trialing a new um, a new platform that they were using, not a platform, but a new structure in which they're doing um, their moves. And this is proven to be effective for them. So the one thing that these drills do is they allow everyone to learn. So if, you know, they've been going down one path uh, and they decided to introduce it here and see if it worked, and now they proved that it works, and that's great. That's great for them. It's also great for us because they're our allies and we'll, you know, pick up from that and decide to, you know, determine how we may implement that into our, our training and into our operations. Right. Absolutely. And, uh, I'm glad that this, these are our allies, by the way. Um, yeah, no, I, I think the, the British have something going for them right now. Obviously we're probably going to pick up and learn this, uh, it, probably good news. Check this picture out though. This is pretty cool. It and, and, and while you're showing that, it doesn't. It also doesn't mean that we went in there with something new. We could have this. Could this whole this whole event could have been? Let's try this new thing. You know, the Brits are going to come in and run it, and we're going to run our standard operations, right? And it wasn't like you know that that could be part of the drill. I mean, that that could have in in literal been the the sense that we want to see how this plays out, right? Not just oh well, we got our butts kicked by the British, right? Well, I, I think it's kind of funny. They they tried to ask for a reset, like, hey, can we get a, a do-over? You're not going to get a, a do-over in real life, right? You're going to die. Um, by the way, free life task is, according to some experts, China already has 3,000 nukes. I, you know, I, I would not doubt, uh, especially since China has been, they, they know that China has bought uh, even black market ones from us. We have missing nukes right now. There are missing nukes all over. There, every almost every country has missing nukes. Is that? I mean, how how does that happen? How do you lose a nuke? Uh, but this picture I just thought was really cool. This is from satellite. This would look like maybe ground, right? I thought that was that was pretty cool. These are huge uh, tarps made to look like the desert. When you start seeing uh, these kind of tarps with uh, street lines on them, that's when you really got to panic. Like uh, painted road tarps, right? What do you think? Tell me down below. And then we have uh, U.S. Marines storm Israeli beaches as part of a major exercise. If people can't wake up to this, this is happening. So my opinion, if you're new here, is that we are about to go to a major conflict with China. Regardless of, of Taiwan, I think Taiwan would be a major part of it or very well could be. Even though people say that, uh, you know, Beijing Bob over here, uh, Brandon is, is all part of it, doesn't matter. He's going to have, he's going to be safe. He's going to be somewhere safe when everything goes down. So are all the people, in my opinion, in the know, will be safe. Who knows? Maybe they'll be part of, uh, in Elon's tunnels. But I think, uh, I also, scary theory is that, you know, uh, they've, if they really are truly trying to cut all this uh, carbon dioxide, there's a, there's a certain being on Earth that I know that produces that. Maybe get a bunch of get a bunch of those and cull them. It says that they are practicing essentially these beach exercises. The three-week-long exercise highlights ever more public ties between U.S. and Israel forces in the face of a regional threat, especially from I ran to the store. It says elements of the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps recently kicked it off an amphibious exercise with the IS defense forces that have placed American forces on the ground in IS to train. It says throw the United States in IS have strong and long-standing military ties. Uh, it says the actual interactions between the two have often been discreet in the past for political reasons. This has been changing in recent years, and this exercise comes less than a month after both countries said that they were exploring a possible plan B. 
with regard to the I country uh, and regime in Tehran did not return to compliance with the multinational deal over its nuclear ambitions. It says the Navy's Task Force 51 and the Marine Corps' 5th Marine Expeditionary Brigade, the MEB, will oversee the forces from their respective services in this exercise, which officially began on November 1st. Odd timing on that, right? Task Force 51 is in charge of all amphibious operations in the Middle East, as well as the around the Horn of Africa and in parts of the Indian Ocean. As part of the U.S. 5th Fleet and U.S. Naval Forces Central Command, or NAVCENT, the 5th MEB is a deployable expeditionary headquarters that supports Marine Corps activity in the same regions. 5th uh, MEB is a component of Task Force 51, and they're often referred to as singularly as Task Force 51 5th MEB. So they're doing major, major amphibious exercises right now. Why would they do that? Dex, do you have an idea? Well, I've often said that when we see this great conflict come about, it's going to be on three fronts all at the same time. And you've got Ukraine, you've got this country that they're landing on the beaches of uh, going toe to toe with the Iran to the store country. And um, you've got Taiwan and China, and then eventually where that leads. Right. So to see these exercises amping up there um, to, see, you know, things amping up in the Ukraine to see more and more um, things happening over by Taiwan. It just sort of all continues to uh, bolster that idea that there's, those are going to be our three fronts. Well, I can, uh, we also know that they have now moved all the artillery to Alaska here in the U S they've moved the iron dome system to Guam. They have submarine hunters out nonstop. They have fully deployed all of these fully loaded uh, amphibious carriers and regular carriers. And now we have troops in Taiwan. We also have troops over by Ukraine. We have uh, sub hunters. We have all that. We have this massive 18 time zone exercise that just ended and they just keep doing. I mean, they're, they're, high, they're preparing any moment for an event to happen. People don't, I, I don't care if somebody says, oh, you're warmongering, whatever. I, I know it's going to happen. I don't care. If somebody says it's not going to happen, this and that, I, that's fine. That's your opinion. I've talked to enough DOD employees, and of course, we've talked to uh, military. I've talked to two high-ranking DOD employees, and I 100% believe that what they said. We are going to be at conflict with under in under two years, and it's already been, I don't know, six months since they said that. I believe their timeline, and I believe it to the T to where I am preparing myself and my family for anything. It's called responsible. And if as long as you don't go overboard and you do it responsibly, then it, it shouldn't make you look crazy either. either. Anything could happen. We could have a, a regional storm come through. We just had one, uh, a so-called hurricane come through Washington, a, a cyclone blitz or a, a bomb cyclone or whatever. That kind of stuff can, can knock out power for normal people. You should prepare for that. And if, if you are prepared for that or that kind of event, when this big one comes... Just think of it as a bigger version of that. When the lights go out. It's very easy to see. If, if you haven't followed all of our previous showed, shows, look at what they are pra practicing for. They are practicing for the most probable sit scenario. And they have real data that they don't share with us that they are basing that on. So on the secret stuff that they're not telling us, they're going to base their exercises on that. We can see the secret data by how they are responding. By the drills they are doing, by the exercises they are doing, that means uh, that is what they are practicing for. That is what they are getting information on. Time and time again, that will prove uh, when they see something happening. If you go before that, they did practices for that. The U.S. military, before many events from here all the way back to the 1900s, you will see that they did practices, war games, for what actually ended up happening. They've done drills for events that ended up happening. They had information that they didn't put public. And then later on, you found out that they did have information on it. They're doing events uh, and drills and exercises for lights going out and bio events, biological events, period. 
And then it says, I country says foiled the U.S. Navy's attempt to seize tanker in the Sea of Oman. So any of these sea or these uh, canals or any of these areas, this is where some experts have even said that uh, very well we could have something kick off. A WW3 in an oil or in a, some sort of ship related event. Dex, can you explain that? I'm actually going to have to, I'm going to have to change something here. So I'm going to, I'm going to go over to this article. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So there, you know, what we've got is uh, two different stories coming out of the Sea of Oman, right? So there's a tanker and apparently it was going, it was uh, apparently getting um, some sort of takeover was happening on it. And we've got the, I ran to the store country pointing the finger at the U S saying the U S was going to do it. Um, and then we'll see in a, in the next article that the Pentagon came out and said, no, 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 we had nothing to do with that. We were there to defend it. Um, and it was the, uh, the I country that was actually doing it. So um, it's kind of a, it was a big standoff. Um, it, and you could look at it both ways. I mean, you know, we've seen what they have done um, and with other tankers. And we've also, you know, you could also see that, you know, there could be confusion over what we were doing with the tanker or if we were doing anything with that tanker. Um, even if that, you know, there are, uh, I guess, questionable acts that can be done that can, uh, be made to look like certain things and those have to start uh with an event now i don't think that would necessarily be as blatant as our military ships out there and that's what you're going to see and we'll show you that in just a moment how both of the militaries the i country and our ships were basically at a standoff right next to this tanker in the sea of oman so uh kind of a, a very crazy uh, and heated event and could have easily uh triggered and set off anything at that moment uh, but right now, they're both pointing fingers on either side. And uh, uh, again, Dex, basically, I, I'm sure you went into the next uh, the next piece here. Yeah, I talked a little bit about uh, the fact that the U.S. is saying it's not. Um, so it's it's a back and forth thing right now. And but what's really you know so you know if officials here are saying I think it's like in the third paragraph on this this. It's from the Pentagon saying, hey, no, we have nothing to do with that. We did not take it over. We were protecting it. Yeah, the officials are telling the Associated Press that that the I country seized a Vietnamese oil tanker. Uh, it says it seized a Vietnamese flagged oil tanker in the Gulf of Oman last month. It still holds the vessel. Two U.S. officials told the Associated Press on Wednesday, revealing the latest provocation in the Mideast waters as tensions escalate between I and United States over Tehran's nuclear program. This, this is something that can trigger this kind of stuff. And everybody is so used to so many of these events happening that they think it will never actually trigger the real event. We are on the cusp of WW3. If not, if, if it hasn't already started in a cyber uh, arena already, it's really naive to think that this isn't going to happen or there won't be that singular event. We know we've already had uh, very close calls. We've even gotten to the point where we almost nuked each other in, in multiple scenarios and got to that point and uh, brought it back down. One of these days, it won't be. And there are crazy people in charge of whole countries that have no red tape. There's no warning system. There's no Mark Milley that are going to call us before they attack, right? There's no there's no Mark Millichan who's going to call us and say, hey, we're sending a bunch of nukes. Just wanted to make sure you had some time to, you know, get your defenses ready for our, our offensive. Don't know what you would call something like that. Uh, a general saying, hey, I know... Uh, my country wants to surprise attack you. <laughs> I was going to give you the heads up on that, huh? I, I think I'm able to do this, right? Because everybody agrees with me because we, we all believe the same thing, right? This isn't treason. Sedition. So again, just remember, this is, we're so far away from a, the WW3 that, or WW2 that we don't think this is going to happen. It's going yeah, to and happen. Yeah, absolutely. And when you talk about how, how it was on edge and so easy to set off, when you go to the, the, the next article, there, there's a couple of videos. And if you want to go watch them, you guys can go watch them you know, on your own time on the website. Just go to marfrugalnews.com. Uh, they're kind of long and, and you kind of have to wait through a lot of stuff because it's coming from the other side, the eye yeah. side, uh, their news. But the pictures in here will very well and very clearly show how close 
you know, this standoff was between our ship, their ship, their people, and this, uh, you know, cargo vessel or merchant vessel or whatever kind of vessel this is. Now, can you point out um, which ships were which? Well, Obviously, I think there's the big a cargo ship. ship. Us, right? Oh, is he, well, the big the the cargo ship, the big destroyer is us, and then is are they in a catamaran? Is that what they have? Yeah, that that's what that looks like, and there may have been another ship involved, that was smaller. But you can see most of these pictures come from their point of view, not ours. These are not our. This is not our release. So if you look, you know, at these pictures throughout the article, they're coming from their smaller ships. That's uh pretty uh pretty close, uh close enough to see each other with yeah. binoculars, even closer well, in some cases. Yeah, and 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 the one scene right there with you know. Uh, a weapon pointed directly at it and a, a, a soldier with his hands on it. Right. Yeah. Uh, if he would have pulled that trigger, we would have been in uh, downtown crazy town. These are the little sperm. I heading to uh, the war of eggs. There we go. That's mm -hmm. yep. I did. I went there. Look at how close this, look at this. I mean, these guys are idiots. Imagine a destroyer, like going up to against a destroyer. They could have literally just destroyed, obliterated this ship. This destroyer versus this catamaran. That's like, um, that's like Mike Tyson versus Squeak. And then uh, let's see here. I, I do want to remind everybody, uh, EDEC. If, so if you have in the past gone through EDEC, they have now changed. Uh, they're changing their name to Off Grid. Uh, we have some really exciting stuff to tell you about very soon. Uh, we can't tell you about it right now, uh, but there's going to be uh, very soon here a product that's going to be incredible. Uh, so I can't wait to be able to even talk about it. Uh, but essentially, it's something that I will be using every single day. And I think a lot of you guys will be as well. But if you do want to protect yourself from getting followed, tracked, uh, have you know people breaking into your phone mobily, or when you're in a Starbucks, somebody using some sort of equipment to get into your phone, get your passwords, get whatever else, I would highly recommend uh, one of these EDEC bags. Now, EDEC ended up standing up for uh, standing for something that they used in law enforcement Uh it actually meant something, uh, but they are now changing it to a very uh, much easier name off grid. They make these bags. These made. Uh, these are made incredibly high quality. They virtually uh, block. They block every single signal, so nothing goes in, nothing goes out. They also make their utility bag, which has a window, so you can actually still use your phone. You can still use your touch screen and everything else. I highly recommend these. Um, what I do is I put my phone in it when I'm going somewhere. I take it out when I'm done. Uh, again, but it does block all signals, especially if you want to go somewhere. If you're going to a bug out spot and you don't want anybody to see that phone going there, you can put it in here uh, until you're done with your trip. Uh, not only that, though, uh, you you know, nobody can access it and nobody can m remote hack it or anything. You can also use it for other things that also stops uh, any kind of EMP or anything like that affecting it. So, okay, uh, Dex, let's, uh, let's talk about... Uh, you know, that's a great point, by the way, I was going to say, it's a great point on the EMP side. A lot of people will download a whole bunch of information, right? Like everything they need to survive, whether it's recipes, uh, survival, what to eat in the woods, videos, how to, all that stuff onto a device, right? And if, you know, something happens like a CME or an EMP, that device may not work. And if you don't, you know, it's not plugged into the wall or it's not protected from an EMP shield, you need it in a Faraday bag. So you could literally take that device that you're trying to store all that information on and keep it in this bag. It's a great use. And then team it up with having either a generator, a battery pack, always having, when a disaster happens, always having charged batteries. And we're talking about now, it's convenient. Back in the day, they didn't have the same kind of thing that they have now. They have these portable battery banks that can actually uh, store power. Now they have long-term ones that are, you know, supposedly once you have them charged up, they can last 10, 15 years. That's the kind of thing that you should have and then have those protected as well. You know, have, have uh, kind of a triad of things protecting each other kind of a circle of protection so again make sure to go check it out uh that is marfuglenews.com slash edec that will uh, shortly be changing but if you do want to get them now 
uh, go over to marfuglenews.com slash edec, E-D-E-C. All right, and then, uh, again, key fobs, things like that, you can also protect. Um, Dex, let's, uh, you want to go into uh, some of the crazier stuff that's going on here? Yes, absolutely. So head over to marfuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for the show, and scroll down to web-only content. Uh, you can't miss it. It's a big orange block there. <clears throat> if you're having trouble finding it and you're on YouTube, just open the description. It's the first link there. Uh, lots going on. The web-only content is like an entire other show. So everything else we can't necessarily talk about, or uh, maybe it's two-sided, or it might get us booted, or it's just uh, didn't make the cut. But there's lots going on. There's a big law, uh, a major um, a legal case going on right now that I've actually personally been following uh, for hours each day. Um, some stuff happening there. And if you haven't been paying attention to that, it's kind of been really interesting. There's nothing really majorly developing yet, uh, but we'll probably have more to report on in the coming weeks as that uh, progresses. Um, lots of other things going on. Something about, um, yeah, this is really interesting. There's a truck driver who spent $153 on his campaign and he won. So, uh, and, and ousted another person. So if you think you can't run for office and win, this guy just proved you could. So go, go take a look. You can learn more about that. You can learn lots of other things that are going on. Uh, a lot of political content, lots of other, um, V related content, things like that. So go take a look, marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show and scroll down to web only content. Yeah, there's there is so much here. Again, I'm I'm scrolling past it. I'm sure it's gonna it's a good tease to get you over there. Uh, again, How about the you see the teacher, a teacher that was uh, forced out of their position, went and ran for the board of the school board and won. Isn't that just amazing? Like that is so flippin' amazing. I, I like that is probably the coolest thing ever. It, it, it it's a it's. I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, and again, over there, it's, uh, it, this is something that we provide that is absolutely gratis, free. So take advantage of it. Share that page out. It gets it out to everybody. Uh, again, that's an easy way to share on everything. Spud Lee, thank you for subscribing. Uh, free Life Tasks, thank you for your support. Bible Talk for Common People, hard to fight in high heels while triggered. 9-11 uh, is like B before because going going into ad. BC going into AD. BC going into AD. Ah, I'm too stupid to get that right now. Two USAs. The one before 911, I miss so much. It's heartbreaking. Now I don't recognize this country. Okay, I do get that. So, oh, okay. 911 is like be before Christ going into after death. It's two different places, right? I, I totally get that now. Two USAs, the one before 911, before the Patriot Act, before all of this insanity. I agree with you 100%. I will 100% back that comment. It is like before Christ and after death. Um, I, I just want to say thank you to all the D Live D lovers over there. Thank you so much for everybody that has supported. Thank you for everybody that uh, continues to to keep this uh, D Live family alive. Um, really, it's quite amazing the the loyalty of the D Live crew. Angela sixteen oh nine Zippy Moons. Thank you so much, Gem Gem. Uh, thank you for being there every night. Uh, again, awesome mod, uh, Jaybird. Uh, we've got Scooby Doo Doo Right, Johnny Fry Guy, Carolina Roots, Maui Racing Realtor. Every night, thank you so much for being there. Um, uh, Kishara Antoinette's. Thank you, thank you. What's her name? Forty five. We've got Jamez AG AGB. Just follow. Thank you so much, Me Man nineteen eighty four. I am sorry if that was a while back. Thank you for hosting. Uh, th almost twenty people bringing them right to us. Thank you so much. Again, thank you, thank you, and thank you. That's that's that means a lot to me, meme. Uh, and Cuban Ron and Bear Claws and everyone else, I love all of you. Dex, thank you for your service tonight. You are an amazing man. Much love, great show, brother. It is now time for the shoutro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's a shoutro. <laughs> Not closing up. Shout out. We 
here's the button. I will never bow down to the man with no crown.
Texas. 